Welcome. This is question number nine, or 18, I should say, in uh, the 10 Ready practice test for Math 2 or Integrated Math 2. We're in subpart 2, which means there's a calculator allowed. And here we go. So the question says in the figure shown, cosine of w is 0.6. What is sine of x? So, or the angle of x, I guess. When I'm working with um, trigonometric functions in terms of like the trigonometric ratios, I should say, I always want to have something that tells me what sine's value, what's cosine's value, and if I need it, what's tangent's value. I don't really need tangent here, but it's nice to know anyway. Some people use Sokotoa. When I was in school, we learned the old aardvark sat on Henry's coat and hat which told me everything I needed to know. Plus, I could picture the old aardvark kind of curled up. That's just how my brain works. I don't know. That probably doesn't spell good things for me in the future, but oh well. Anyway, so sine, based on what I'm given here, is opposite over hypotenuse. And cosine would be the adjacent angle, which would be the one next to it that's not the hypotenuse. It's really the side of the triangle or side of the, yeah, side of the triangle here that makes up the angle that's not the hypotenuse. So say you have angle W, the adjacent side would be here because it makes up, it creates the angle W and also is not the hypotenuse. Anyway, adjacent over hypotenuse. Don't really need tangent, but the old aardvark would tell me it's opposite over adjacent. Now, what can I do with that information? I can use it to create ratios in my little um, triangle here, and I'm good to go. So I'm going to worry about W and the Y. I should also note that X and Y are congruent because they're vertical angles. They have the, we used to say they have the same butt. I know that's not super appropriate, but um, if they make the X here, you have that sort of feel of them being vertical angles. It's two V's together, really, so that's how it works. So X and Y have the same value. So if I can find the value of Y, I could find the value of X. Now, what do I know? I know the cosine of W is 0 0.60. I always take, sort of like I'm flying a plane out from the angle, try not to hit any of the walls. That side would be the opposite side of W. I just do that to give my head a feel for where everything else is. Obviously, the side opposite from that, uh, from the right angle, would be the hypotenuse. And that would make this side the uh, adjacent angle or adjacent side. Now, with that being given to me, um, cosine is 0 0.60, which would be 6 tenths. If you were the type to reduce, you could say it's 3 over 5, because all of them are in fraction form, so it makes it super easy if I go ahead and convert that into a fraction, just saying. Um, if the adjacent side is 3 over, or adjacent over hypotenuse, it's 3 over 5. So the adjacent side I can eliminate the word adjacent because it only applies to W. It's not the adjacent side for Y. And the hypotenuse, I can go ahead and put 5. Now, I want to know what the sine value for X is, which would be the same sine value of X because the angle measure is the same, is congruent to the sine angle of Y. So now I'm ready to look at y, and I'd fly my plane out, and this is the opposite side. This is my hypotenuse. This is my adjacent side. Now, if I want sine for y, I'm going to do opposite over hypotenuse. The opposite of 3, the hypotenuse is 5. So there it is, sine of y and sine of x, the angle, the sine ratio, I should say, is 3 over 5. Convert that back in, and it gives me 0 0.6. I really didn't need to break it out into parts here, but it's a good strategy to do it every time anyway. So the answer to number 18 is C. You may have noticed much more quickly, and this that's kind of the long route to that answer, you may have noticed more quickly that oftentimes the sine of one of the two non-right angles 
is equivalent to the cosine of the other one, just because of how their the relationship between the adjacent and the opposite side. So you could have figured it out much more quickly. But in the long run, that's how you get to that answer. But if you know that, now you know, if you didn't know it before, if you have a triangle, the sine of one of them will be equivalent to the cosine of the other angle that's not 90 degrees. So that can help you figure it out much faster, save you a little time, maybe get to, to the end. That's especially helpful when you get to the end of your time or maybe you're on the ACT or something.